we are working on technology to read the Book of Life, technology we think that will impact your lives and the life of your children in a positive way. Yes, we think that we can, by reading the Book of Life and by making technology that doing this in a more affordable way, that we can uh, make treatment of cancer more effective. If you look at these four, four women, four friends, all of which developed cancer, all of which had a different cancer, a different treatment, a different chance of full recovery. What makes these cancers different from one another? So cancer develops because cells start growing uncontrollably. Normally cells are being controlled by the genetic information inside each cell that contains an instruction list that encodes for their behavior. Now, when this genetic information acquires mutations during the lifetime of the cell, cells, the instruction list can be altered and cells can start dividing uncontrollably. So it's very important that we, that we learn as much as possible from this genetic information. And all genetic information is encoded in our DNA, DNA which on its turn is wrapped up in chromosomes. If everything went well, all of you received 23 chromosomes from both your parents when you were conceived. And these chromosomes are all wrapped into the nucleus of every cell. So every cell of the body, and there are 10,000 billions of these cells, contains the full human genome. And this full human genome, packed in this chromosome, essentially consists of a long, non interrupted strand, double strand of DNA, which is, ba which is constructed based on building blocks, the, the basic letters of the DNA, A, C, T, and G, which we call the bases. There are three billions of these bases in each cell in the full hum human genome. So if you would stretch the, the, un the, the DNA in one, in one cell, in one, one full human genome, you would count two meters. So two meters in every single cell. If you then would stretch all DNA present in your entire body, you could travel to, to the sun and back 50 times. So there's an amazing amount of information that's captured in a very small volume in the cell. And how is that possible? Well, that's possible because DNA might be very long, but its diameter is also very thin. So if you, to put a little bit in perspective, if you would compare the diameter of DNA to uh, the diameter of an average human hair, average human hair is about 100 micrometers, it's about 50,000 th 50, times larger than a DNA strand. So, three billion base pairs, three billion of them. How, how can we sequence them? This is not an easy nut to crack. Currently, people do it by, first of all, taking this genomic DNA, which is like a big spaghetti, huh? and then cutting it into small pieces, cutting it even smaller pieces, pieces of 50 to 100 base pairs. And then sequence them, and afterwards with software and supercomputers assemble everything back together. Now, again, it's not an easy nut to crack. Just imagine that you would take Ulysses, the famous book of James Joyce, and you would take, you would take out 50 to 100 letters, re read it randomly, and try to figure out what's, what, what's in, the, in that text. But that's not easy. Nevertheless, nevertheless, sequencing has gone a long way. If you, would, if you look here at the cost for sequencing a single human genome, and from, the, from the start, when the first human genome was assembled 12 years ago, at that time, it, the price was about $100 million. Right now, the cost has dropped tremendously, down to a few thousands, euro, thousand euros for one single human genome. And then to put a little in perspective, what I, what I show here, 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 so is the trend of the, the decrease of the cost, and also the trend the, that, we can, that we see in technology improvement in semiconductor manufacturing, it's what we call Moore's Law, which is essentially a scaled version of the cost for a single transistor, which is a single switch in a, in a, in a chip that you can find in your smartphone or, or laptop. And if you just think about the dumb phone you had a couple of years ago, and the, and the smart things that you're walking around with right now. And, you, and, and then you realize that DNA sequencing has actually outpaced this technology with orders of magnitude. 
This is rather impressive. Nevertheless, still, sequencing today requires bulky, expensive equipment. There's an example here from uh, a system from Pacific Biosciences, a company from California, which we are, also, uh, we are collaborating with. It's a very sophisticated system. It analyzes tens of thousands of single molecules simultaneously. It reels high-quality data, but the, the tool is horrendously expensive, and is, it's very big. So it's, it's, this will never be adopted in, in, in hospitals or in, the doctors, in doctors' offices. No, we envision that in the future, for sequencing tomorrow, you need a compact benchtop-based tool that can deliver the information in a time-effective way. You, you, time between DNA in and sequence out should be tens of minutes rather than days, as it is now. And it should be cost-effective, too. So how, how do we think we can achieve that? I th we think we can leverage from the revolution that's present right now in nanotechnology and the technology in your chips. If you just look at the, the dimensions in your, that are present on the chips in your smartphone and laptop, well, the, 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 the finest features there approach the dimensions of biomolecules. So on these chips, we put nanopores. Nanopores are little holes in membranes uh, separating two liquid reservoirs. And these holes can have diameters with, uh, with dimensions very close to the diameter of a DNA strand. Now, when you do that, and when you guide the DNA strand through such a pore, you c the different bases will slide through on a one-by-one -one basis. And we can also analyze the base content on a one-by-one -one basis, and hence read the DNA. So what we're doing here is, so we, we are developing this chip with these small pores, we have the DNA sliding through this nanopore. Simultaneously, we excite it with light with a certain color. The DNA responds to that by emitting weak light pulses with a different color, a color that is, that is characteristic for the different bases. And this way, we can read the DNA code directly. Now, what does this mean? This means that in, in our technology, we can read much longer strands of DNA. We can go up to uh, strand lengths of a thousand or ten th tens of thousands of base pairs. We can make them on chips, which can, man can be manufactured in a very cost-effective way. So we can essentially reduce the cost of these chips to well below a thousand euro. But suppose we can sequence everybody's genome for less than a thousand euro. Why would we do that? What's in it for you? Still sounds expensive, right? 500, 800 euros for sequencing a genome? Well, we think it, it, can, it brings quite some value. On the one hand, for instance, in the development of, uh, for cancer applications, on, for instance, on the one hand, if we can sequence the genome of healthy cells, of cancer patients, and of the cancer cells, that we can identify the mutations that generated the cancer. We can identify the molecular origin of the cancer and therefore also develop better therapies, more targeted therapies. On the other hand, when we can sequence the cancer genome, we can identify early on the, exactly the type of cancer a patient has and therefore provide the patient with the correct treatment and and win and gain quite a bit of time. Along the same lines, we think that humans, human genome sequencing will revolutionize the world of medicine by making it much more personalized. If we, have, if we can sequence everybody's genome, we'll have a, a, DNA, a DNA profile, let's say a genomic passport for, for everybody. We can, we can correlate your DNA profile to the way you are responding to drugs, to medication, to treatment. And therefore, doctors can make very precise prescribings when you have a certain disease. Although sequencing might still sound expensive then, we can, cost, we can save a lot of costs for healthcare just by, just by applying the correct treatment for everybody personally, individually.
that that provides gains in in cost, but also gains in quality and life quality. An obvious other application of DNA uh, sequencing is organ transplantations. And if you need an organ transplant, then people are going to put a foreign tissue, foreign tissue in your body, that will, with a high chance, lead to rejection of that tissue, which of course is a problem. Therefore, the organs need to have DNA that's very close to your own DNA. So if we have everybody's DNA passport, and we can, we are able to link much, much better, much quicker, the the correct organ, the correct donor to the correct patient, and the success rates will increase. And I foresee that in the future, everybody will be sequenced e even before they're born. People are working right now already on on trying to sequence sequence the, the, the DNA present in the blood of, of the mothers. A, a tiny fraction of that is actually fetal DNA. So, so by, by sequencing that, you can already know a lot about your children before they're even born. And you may wonder why you would want to, want to do that. Why, why do you want to know all these things? You will know a lot, of, a lot of them already. Now, one of the things you will know as well if whether you have a predisposition for certain diseases. And a lot of these things, I mean, this is not the DNA gives you a predisposition. This doesn't mean that you will na naturally develop this disease. No, you can adapt your lifestyle. You can, you can adapt the way of living, the way you, you feed, the way you move. And, and, and this way, in this way, prevent developing of the disease. So we think that, that DNA sequencing will provide us with a much more, much better healthcare, more person, personalized, preventive, and it will have a high impact of everybody's life. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention.